Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are here in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio getting ready to record episode number 197. We're going to talk about something that's right up Coach Don's alley. That's uh, catching and the one knee down catching style. But before we get into that, let's talk about the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats. Use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. And again, take advantage of that EFP20, folks. It's a great way for you to support the podcast and to keep saving some extra money on the purchases that you should already be making. Also, let's talk about patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. If you're in a position where you can help us, we would love for you to become a patron. We definitely need you know, eight or 10 more people to come on board, depending upon how much uh, you decide to commit to the five, 10 or $20 a month. If Four people come on board at uh, 20 bucks a month. We'll be in business. I was going to say, join the family. We yeah. need you. We're so close to the idea of being a break-even operation that it, it's, like it's right there for us. We, we definitely you know, have a time frame in mind for when we need to reach that. We appreciate the patrons that we've had. All of their support has kept us hanging on to the dream that someday this uh, would be at least a, a break-even proposition. It's been a labor um, of love. Yeah, and, yeah. and we enjoy, we enjoy yeah. the heck out of it, don't yeah. get me wrong. But I also, at that point in my life, or uh, how much of my retirement am I willing to invest in other people enjoying fast pitch? <laughs> Hanging out in the recording chairs here. Right. Yeah. So, so if you can, become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. So, Don, we've talked about this topic in, in several different places on the Everything Fast Pitch podcast a little bit. And, you know, the phenomenon now, the, the newest, greatest idea for catching is what's, you know, thought of as the one knee down catching style. And the thing that being old school like I am, there's things about it that people have convinced me that I think can be positives, but there's things about it that I still think can be definitely negative. And I wanted to just kind of talk about it from an old catcher's perspective. You know, last night was a perfect example. I've been watching a little bit of the Men's College World Series as well. and. We had a situation in the game last night between uh, LSU and Wake Forest where a very crucial situation, the catcher was trying to use the one knee down catching style with a base runner on base, and the pitcher uncorked a pitch that was not where the catcher was expecting it, and the, the catcher had no chance of blocking it, ended up just kind of diving at it, trying to backhand it, and you know his body was totally out of position. Of course, the ball got by him. The runner ended up not scoring, but it put a lot of extra pressure on their team, a lot of extra pressure on the defense. And that, to me, is the the dilemma of this idea. So things I think are good about it, it puts you in a really good position to sell more pitches as strikes. It gives you a really good opportunity to give the umpire a better look at the ball. Things that I think are really negative about it is I think you're in a very awkward position in some cases to do much when we've got runners on base. And so that, to me, is where the dilemma lies. You know, I like the idea of it helps the pitcher get more strike calls. I hate the idea that it puts me in a position where I might not be able to stop a runner from advancing because I'm down on one knee. So Don, go. Tori, I'm going with the grumpy old man perspective here. And I mean, were, were the pitchers not getting pitches before? Weren't we always getting them those pitches? Are the umpires off that much that uh, that this is going to make a, a huge difference for them? I've, and I, and I, I will defend that part of it. I do think it has made a big difference for the... Uh, or, or had they just evolved into giving more of the strike zone? Were they making mistakes before? I know we do the slow motion replay and they've got the box on the you know, on the TV screen. And if it hits the box, then the umpires are typically getting it right all the time. Right. I mean, are we saving the catcher's knees? Are we providing a better target for the pitchers? Right. Well, I um, think that's the, the, I mean, the are, are, that, that's the question. I mean, how many catchers stopped catching along the way because they, their knees got worn out because they were catching traditionally? Right. And, you know, I mean, is, is the give and take going to be, uh, you know, worth the, you know, worth the change? And, 
you know, I get that things change and we evolve and all those things. Maybe the pitchers are skilled enough now that they don't throw as many wild pitches as when I was behind the plate myself. But I'm still, again, feeling that, that old school shake in my head, lazy, lazy kids, you know, right. every, everybody's getting lazy now. And yeah. Well, the one thing I will say, watching it when it's done well, it does not appear to be lazy to me. It just appears to be really different. And like I said, I, I've kind of come around to the idea that I think when there's no runners on base, I can see some real advantages to it. Now, there's still some plays that I think you're at a disadvantage making from that position. I think it's, you know, now, again, some kids are, are super athletic and they can still, you know, scramble out of that one knee down position pretty well to get to a pop up or to get to, a, you know, to feel the bunt. So I think that there are always exceptions, but I think that there's also going to be some kids that maybe are not quite as athletic that, you know, might not get to a bunted ball as quickly, might not get to a pop-up as easily because they're down so low in that crouch. But to me, the idea of the one knee down when there's no runners on base, I think I see at least enough potential advantages from it that I can, I've talked myself into thinking it's okay in that situation. So the umpire umpire might be upset because he's getting hit by more foul balls if he's got a better view. (laughs) Well... Should, shouldn't be, but you know. But, uh, the, but the flip side of it is the unfortunate thing, and, and, and this is again where you know this example from the baseball game last night kind of stuck in my memory. If the pitchers are skilled enough where the ball's going where it's supposed to be, then I think the combination of then one knee down, showing the umpire the ball better, giving them a better look at, of the strike zone has real potential to pay off for us. But if my pitcher's not hitting spots, if she doesn't really know where it's going when it's coming out of her hand, a 50% chance that when she lets it go, it's going someplace that I don't expect it. Right. And I have, you know, some, again, some issues with the one knee down and I really don't like it. I, and I'm, I don't know that I'll ever be convinced that it's a good strategy when we have runners on base and especially when we have runners on third. Yeah. I think that's kind of where we're going to go on the topic. And as you're describing this story, I'm, I'm seeing that a lot of the athletes are bigger now. I'm five foot eleven, so I'm not a, a big blocking view type of catcher anyway. Right. But some of these catchers, when they stand up and they make the umpires look small. Yeah, no, we've got so, a lot of six so, foot tall Division One women's catchers right now. Yeah, so for them to get down for some of the shorter umpires, that might make a little bit of a difference for sure. Yeah, and you know, as you're describing the the runner on third base scenario where we make a mistake and you know, and we might lose, potentially lose the game or, you know, definitely give away a run that we might otherwise not have incurred if we were in the traditional stance. But, right. um, you know, Coach Stan had mentioned when we brought this topic up for today's podcast, had talked about the need to be able to do both. If you are a, a one knee catcher, that you still need to do traditional because you're going to have to do that at some point right. if you're going to optimally be um, the best behind the plate as you can be. So Right. Well, and the idea, I think that as, as this one knee down continues to develop and more and more people continue to do it, there's probably some techniques and things that are available in there that will, as they evolve, make some of these challenges, you know, something that kids are more prepared for, that they've got more tools to, to handle it. The biggest thing to me is I think that at the highest level where your pitcher is very consistent, I think then it has a lot more reward versus risk. But I think at younger levels Mm -hmm. where, or, or the, it could still be at the highest level, you know, in that, in that game last night, the pitcher that, you know, uncorked that crazy pitch, they I think they said it's going to be the number two pick in the uh, major league draft next week. Right. So he's obviously very good. But in that situation, when he threw that pitch, the catcher was expecting it on the inside corner. It ended up six inches on the off the outside part of the plate, and there was no chance in the world that the catcher could move to catch it. He's over a hundred too. Yeah, and so he's he's bringing it. Yeah, so so again, I think it's definitely a to be determined discussion. I think that we're going to continue to revisit this idea. But right now, I, I have to give. The one knee down crew credit for one thing. The first time I saw it, I thought it was crazy. Fifteenth <laughs> time I saw it, I still didn't get it. I'm warming up to it with you, Tori, but I'm still shaking my head. Yeah, now, now that I've seen it a whole lot and seen a lot of really good kids doing it, I can see some potential in it, but I'm a long way from convinced that it's the best choice when we've got runners on base. That I'm, I'm still not convinced on. Because one of the things that I think we have to guard against 
you know, sometimes I think us old guys, you know, we think back to, well, when I was in my regular catching stance, I blocked everything. Well, you really didn't. No, but it was hard enough as it was then. And so the idea now is, you know, let's say if, if we could do a comparison between a hundred pitches with a runner on base, either in the one knee down or the traditional, you know, crouch, if there was a way to compare how many of those, the traditional positioning would allow you to block versus not. And that's the risk and reward. And, right. And, and comparing that to how many, the one knee down puts you in a position to block or not. And then you know, I guess you have to expand that discussion from there. So, so how now many I've, more strikes are you getting? Right. And, and yeah. now that I've blocked it, what can I do with it? So, you know, from the one knee down, can I still get up quickly enough to, you know, get to the ball and still make a play? Or in either case is my only hope that I block it and, you know, the runner's not aggressive, not fast enough to take advantage of it either way. So it's it's going to be an ongoing uh, project, I think. I would think we'll have to get back another year from now and, and talk about one knee down again. But as I said, I'm, I've, I've been convinced that it works with nobody on base. I think it, you know, watching the good kids do it, I, I like it in that situation, but I still don't like it when we've got runners on. So you better practice both because you're going to have runners on third base, right. right? Well, and I think the biggest thing is, you know, as it grows and more and more people do it, I do think we're going to continue to see changes and there's going to be little adjustments. And so maybe ultimately it ends up being something that we all turn. Kids are getting know, more athletic all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, watching the uh, women's games, uh, the women's college world series, Tennessee had Allie Shipman. She's like six feet tall. Kenzie Hansen from Oklahoma. She's like six feet tall. So you've got a whole bunch of, you know, really tall, powerful, athletic kids going behind the plate. And I think that's, you know, part of where this idea of being able to set up in a position to give the umpire the best look you possibly can has really kind of taken hold. If those great players keep working at it, they might get to the point where one knee down doesn't seem to be a disadvantage when there's runners on base. Just right now, I'm not convinced. No, I think it's uh, just like you said, Tori, it's going to be something that we get a chance to to watch and see evolve and... We'll always have our opinions. I'm still going old school for now. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> the one thing, though, that uh, it is kind of exciting is that there's places in our game that people are still trying to be innovative and trying to come up with some, yeah. new, some new things. So yeah. I'll, I'll give credit for that, too. So Absolutely. Um, so let us know what you think. One knee down. Is, uh, are us old school guys uh, are completely we crazy? out of the boat? Or are you on uh, in the same pl- place that I'm at where in some cases you think it's awesome, in some places maybe not so much? Let us know what you think. As always, you can reach out to us with questions, comments, ideas, suggestions to everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. Please make sure you support our sponsor, the Anderson Bat Company. Become a patron if you can. Go to patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch. Coach Don and I really do need the help, and we really do appreciate the support of everybody who's been supporting us. Go to the fastpitchprep.com website, order your Square Cuts training discs there, You can also have access to the blogs and the YouTube channel. There's hundreds and hundreds of pieces of information there. And as always, just make sure you uh, reach out to us with uh, any of your questions or comments because we want to talk about the stuff that you're really interested in. So for Coach Don McKinley and our producer, Stan Lewis, this is Coach Torrey saying thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.